All right, guys, so uh, here I am sitting in the front seat of a vehicle, and what we are talking about today is the most controversial, worst subject in the world. It's shooting through windshields or not shooting through windshields, okay? Trying to make that decision. So first things first, um, I, have, I, I don't have any experience actually shooting someone through a windshield, so I, I feel like that's good to just get out there. So today we're talking about sh to shoot through a windshield or not to shoot through a windshield. The uh, idea behind it, um, if you're going to do it, probably the way that you should do it, uh, this is something that goes, it, it gets very controversial on the internet, and again, my goal is always to the viewer at home to give you a nuanced, educated discussion, um, not to uh, just give my opinion or do this because I said so. So, uh, the reason I think this gets such a touchy subject is because um, it's, I don't think there's too many people out there that have been in gunfights through windshields, um, and if there is somebody out there that's been in multiple gunfight, gunfights through windshields, uh, and you have some data, some stories, some information. I am all ears for it. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to give you in my time in the, the industry the stories that maybe I've heard or things I've heard about it and, and why I've come to my conclusion, okay? So, first things first, I think this is an extremely contextual thing. And I think that's probably the reason that's, like, made me want to make this video is because context is often lacking from these type of videos, meaning uh, you'll get someone who was in the military uh, and they're talking about this and they say, oh, cars are absolute bullet traps. Um, and then you'll get like the law enforcement people that are kind of split. And, and basically what ends up happening is, you know, uh, it's really easy to shoot somebody that's in a vehicle because you just aim at the windshield and those rounds go down. So it's understandable that like, yeah, vehicles are bullet traps, but context is just completely left out of this. Okay. So, um, for me, my time as a, as an infantryman, uh, we were rolling around in up armored land cruisers, uh, and max pros. And, uh, I think I only drove one vehicle that was actually just a normal vehicle when I was overseas. And that was in a very low risk, um, well, what was perceived to be extremely low risk area. Uh, and, so for us, yeah, we're probably going to step out of the vehicle and shoot back. Not to mention that we have M4, so I don't want to try and take a 14.5 barrel and be shooting from here. If I need to shoot, I'm going to get out of the vehicle and shoot. Uh, but for civilians and for law enforcement, um, it's a different environment, it's a different objective, and there's a lot of different situations that are going to go on. I'm more so concerned right now with the civilian side of this, okay? Me as a concealed carry holder, would I ever cons consider shooting through a windshield? Um, long story short, yes, I would. And uh, I'm going to give you kind of the scenario in my head where I think it would be valuable to shoot through a windshield uh, at our target is the only thing that's going to pull a bad person off their gun um, is probably when they realize that gunfight is a two-way street. Um, we see it time and time again in videos, whether it be robberies, whatever it is, all of a sudden it becomes a two-way street and that pretty much takes the wind out of the sails of most bad guys. Um, I've seen multiple videos of dudes, like three or four dudes getting shot at and all of them turn and can't get out of there fast enough, okay? So um, that's not every single bad guy, I get it. Um, you know, we should train to, to fight hard, you know, badass versions of ourselves, I guess, but the reality is that's hopefully not who we're gonna be going up against because that would suck a lot. Um, so the idea is, you know, in the military, uh, an analogy we used was you're, you know, you're moving a, a group through the middle of a field and you're going to ambush them. And you wait till they're in the middle of the field and you ambush them, blah, 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 blah. You start shooting. The only thing that's going to get uh, me sitting behind cover and taking well-aimed shots at the people that I'm ambushing to reconsider and think maybe I should get off my optic is if that becomes a two-way street of a gunfight and I start getting engaged, you know, whether it's suppressive fire or not. Now that's in a different environment that we can look at that, but that just stands to show you that getting shot at, I don't anticipate there's too many bad guys that would walk out of the front of a car and as a handgun starts going off in their general direction and be like, ah, it's all good, he'll have to repenetrate glass a couple times, I'm not really in that much danger. Um, probably realistically, 99% of the time, not what's gonna happen if you ask me. Uh, so the scenario that's in my brain where I think, you know what, I would have a couple different priorities, but uh, getting rounds going back at the that people, depending on the environment um, and depending on my mental capacity to make that call, uh, one for me would be I'm driving, a vehicle s slams on its brakes, stops short, forces me to slam on my brakes, uh, rear door opens, I see the person get out and they are wielding a weapon, a firearm, right? Um, and if I'm so close that my only option, my mobility, my vehicle is no longer an option, 
or the best option it is to just slam into the vehicle in front of me, that's a possibility. But you could also uh, immobilize your vehicle while you're doing that, so that's something to consider. Um, but that is a situation where I would consider drawing a firearm coming up and immediately shooting back through that windshield. And the reason I would consider that is because it's drastically going to make that person rethink what they're doing. It's going to make them rethink pointing a firearm at me. Um, and at that point, you have met the immediate fear for your life. You're, you're seeing the intent, the ability um, for them to actually end your life. Uh, and, and along with that, I would also tell if I have a passenger, I would tell that passenger to get behind the engine block. Um, and I think it would be a, a, an ideal thing to be able to shoot back and allow yourself the freedom of maneuver. There's a lot more that goes into that though. There's the ability for you to shoot back and not just hopefully not get so focused on them that you don't pull out into traffic or hopefully traffic, you know, there's so much that goes on in these situations um, that you just have to hope for the best. Um, and do your best with what you've got. Um, that, that's kind of the one scenario for me as a civilian where I don't think it'd be the most ridiculous thing, um, but the environment would be would be really important. Is my backdrop clear? Am I in an area where um, I you know, can have pretty good accountability for my rounds? How far away are they? All those things become uh, factors, and I will say this, passive is always an option. Um, maybe they just want your vehicle and your things, but you gotta think about how dynamic and crazy that gets if you're you're basically just saying, okay, I surrender, I'm not gonna do anything, you can have my vehicle, it's just a thing, I don't care. Um, well, if they're slamming on the brakes with rifles and in the middle of traffic or doing some of that stuff, that there's a lot that could go wrong in that side. And the, the real answer is nobody knows the answers to these questions until it's happened, um, and hindsight's always 2020. When we talk about um, how to shoot through a windshield, okay? How to shoot through a windshield becomes very important because one of the critiques I hear about not shooting through a windshield is each time you shoot, you're gonna have to penetrate a new hole in the glass as the enemy is traversing in front of you. Um, and I'm not gonna disagree with the fact that that definitely could happen, especially if someone's really close, like right over the, the hood of the car, absolutely that could happen. Um, but those rounds, if they're that close, are still going to affect that target. Even if you're penetrating that first round through, yeah, it might tumble, it might throw, I wouldn't feel comfortable having, like I wouldn't be like, yeah, it's, I'll be fine. No, no, that round is still going somewhere, especially if you're that close, that uh, point of aim shift is not gonna be as crazy. But the way you really wanna do this is you really want to get your muzzle up and as close to the glass as you possibly can because all the force from your muzzle is going to blow a hole bigger in the glass and then you can traverse through that hole and what you're actually shooting at so that you limit re-penetrating through the glass, okay? That's the, in my opinion, the better way to shoot. Um, that's the way I learned um, to shoot through a windshield and I think that makes the most sense. If I stand back here, um, obviously, yeah, that's gonna increase the effect that the windshield's gonna have on it and I'm gonna have a, a lower likelihood of shooting through that same hole and having to penetrate the glass again. Okay, now, why would I tell someone not to fight through a windshield, okay? Why would I say, hey, this is probably not a good idea. If you have the time and the ability to get out of the vehicle, like in other words, the vehicle is not mobile um, and you have the time and ability to get out of the vehicle, like your law enforcement, um, you know, get out of the vehicle and use uh, a, you know, clear what you're firing through. That absolutely makes sense. But here's the thing, as concealed carry people, we're looking at getting ambushed most commonly, right? That's the thing I'm worried about is getting ambushed. Uh, if I have the time and the ability to kind of like stop, take my seatbelt off, get out of the vehicle, I probably could have just driven away, right? I probably could have just kept on going or drove or do whatever. I'm not saying every single situation that way. There's totally a situation where maybe, you know, I come up on something and I have a second to like, what the heck's going on? Pop out, get my seatbelt off, get out of the vehicle and stand uh, right up there by my A pillar. Um, but I, again, those for civilians who are concealed carrying, that's not as common, right? Uh, any situation where we had that time to get our gun out and step outside the vehicle, I would venture to say we probably could have just driven away. Um, and that's something you don't hear talked about very often. So anyway, guys, that's a little bit of that nuanced discussion. Um, I am 100% open to the conversation, to talking about it. Um, and I, I think that what's really important to consider is um, when, when people realize a gunfight is a two-way street, it definitely changes behavior. Um, and I think that that is valuable even to have those rounds and yes, having them shift, um, it, it, it could really change the dynamics of what's going on. I also think it's valuable for, you know, getting the gun out and you don't have to worry about putting the vehicle in park or anything to get a couple rounds off if you're being like directly, that rifle's pointed at you. Um, and that's the last thing I'll kind of say about it is why I don't think it should be a hard never or always type thing. But um, I can definitely tell you that if someone's pointing a rifle at me and I decide to go on the aggressive, aggressive side, 
Um, the last thing I want to do is have to put it in park, then take my seatbelt off, then open my door, then like clear garment. Like that to me is a, they're just going to be watching all that happen and shoot you versus maybe being able to go for the gun first, get a couple shots off, then start to go through some of those things as you exit the vehicle and get out. Um, just my two cents on it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching the video. If you have experience, if you're somebody who's been in a gunfight or you know ha has experience fighting through a uh, windshield like this, um, you know by all means leave your opinion in the comment section. You know, try to keep it uh, actual, constructive, and in informative. Not so much you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, but if you come in with really good analytics and data and experience and all this stuff, I would love that. That information is so valuable. So please do not be afraid to share that if you have. Um, a solid analytical reason backing up your you know position on it. that's what we need to hear that's what the conversations need to be um, I think there needs to be a bar that's higher for the dudes that are teaching and saying okay I've been in a gunfight um, and now all of a sudden that gunfight translates to every situation ever scenario everywhere because I can just whip that out and say oh I've been in a gunfight I've actually done it in real life so what do you know well, hang on, there's limits to that experience, okay? So there's plenty of people that have been in gunfights, crazy ass gunfights, but probably have never been in a gunfight uh, around a non up armored vehicle uh, shooting through a windshield in a populated American city, okay? That's probably gonna fall more under the law enforcement folks that have dealt with that. So experience has its limits, um, and in my opinion, you absolutely need to be transparent about your experience, and you need to be able to tell people, hey, you know, I have been in this situation, here's what I learned from it here's what I felt, here's how it went. Like that's the value of the actual experience. You didn't get in a gunfight and all of a sudden get faster at reloading, right? Um, there still needs to be training and, and stuff that we derive from that. So I think that's super important uh, to just be transparent about that, right? Um, I have never been in a gunfight. I've never been in a gunfight in the front seat of a car like this. Um, I've had sketchy situations happen in a vehicle, but it was an up, -arm, up armored vehicle uh, where returning fire wouldn't have really been the, the, the option. We just break contact and keep pushing. Um, so every environment, objective, and situation should have a different set of specific tactics that we're looking at um, or just things that we consider, you know, considerations that we want to do uh, rather than just trying to take a blanket statement like, oh, I'm a gunfighter, so i.e. I know everything about uh, working in different environments. I know everything about every role from the concealed carry person to the SWAT guy to the um, SF guy to the SEAL, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much. Please leave comments, uh, like, subscribe, check out our training. Take care, guys.